Hey guys, Jim Rose from RPM Dynamics. In this video, we're going to go over patching on the Midas console. And this is an interesting one. The console has not changed to actually use a grid like on a bunch of other consoles, but the little uh, two from pages, the way that they were set up on the other Pro Series that anyone that was a non-Midas user, you either loved it or hated it. And there's a pretty good chunk of people that really did not like using that system. This is a, is a pretty advanced method of placing things where you need to go, which you can use the touchscreen for again. So I'm gonna go through patching my audio on this console. Currently, right now, I have a, a DN9630 that I modified into two into one. So I've got a 48 channel interface tagged into this console over here. So there's two streams of AES50 coming in. And I wanna just show you how easy it is to patch those 48 channels coming from my multi-track to this show file. So you can see that it's as convoluted as some people might have thought the other system was, this is really, really easy to patch your show files without getting frustrated if you had problems with the other patching system. So we're gonna to go to the patching tab here. When we go to the patching tab, it brings up a, a, a screen that has inputs and outputs. So it's sort of a two from things now, but it's a lot more normal in terms of where you wanna put things. You have tabs of whether you want it to come from an internal item or an I.O. box or and on the outside, are you sending it to an I.O. box or are you sending it to somewhere in the console? Anything that's patching audio in this console, this page is locked to start with to keep there from being a problem. So based on that, right now you can see if you look at this console, there's nothing patched in it. What we're going to do is we're going to go to we're going to unlock the audio here. And you got to hold your finger on this one again to get it to unlock. We've unlocked the audio patching page now. So we're going to hit here on the plus button here. When we hit a plus button. Now all of the Midas boxes of the types are listed. All of the DL boxes for Midas interface. All of the Midas interfaces have an option of a type. They also have an ID number. Every Midas box short of a DL251 has 18 IDs that they can be. The 251 only has four. That being said, it could be any of these types of devices plugged in. But now on this console, if we click auto detect, what just happened here is it detected that there was two generic AES50 streams, the two 24 channel streams coming from those boxes that already found them. And it's telling me right for the devices and models, if I click here, this is a generic device plugged into front of house port one. This is a generic device plugged into front of house port two, which are two of the ports on the back of the console. The good thing is you really don't need to know where they're plugged in anymore because if you know the IDs of your box, you know where it's coming from. So if you have a stage rack that has say three DL231 mic splitters, which are 24 channels a piece, and you have them stacked one, two, three in your box, you're gonna automatically know that the top one is one to 24, the middle one is 25 to 48, the bottom one is 49 to 72, based on the fact of the way you've stacked them in there. And if you use logic, you would ID those things in that box in an order that made sense, like ID one, ID two, ID three. Sort of like the generic streams I have coming from here. There's an ID1 and there's an ID2 for these generics, but this is port based on these. So now that I've done this, I know these items are here. So if I click on this box right here, which is the 24 channels from port one, I know what they are and I know this is where I want them to go to. So if I go to my inputs tab, my inputs tab just came up and because I pre-labeled my show, I know what all my inputs are for my show. And I have 32 channels, actually 30, because I'm not using two, I skipped a few. So I have a 32 channel patch in this show file that I have running right now. And I have 48 channels of input that I can pick it up from. What I did ahead is I took and I made a, a patch list here. And the patch list here that I've made is my inputs and where they're coming from. On this console, in order to patch, I can just grab an input, and if I hold my finger on it long enough, it selects them all. So I can have an auto patch of 1 to 24, but I know that's not the order of this. If I hold my finger on it again, it'll unpatch. I know in my patching that channels 1, 2, 4 are in order. 
So I can go from this, one, two, three, four, grab those four inputs, click on the first input, and it bumps them over. I know from my list here that channel 10 is my snare 2. So input 10 is going to go to my snare 2 channel, and it's labeled right in front of me, shows me what it is. Now I know everything from 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, which are the holes in between them, are all in order of the next channels in the patch. So now we've got everything patched up through channel 10. Now we know bass, keys, Leslie Low, everything up through input 17 now are in order. So we'll grab 11 to 16 here. We'll dump those into there. And then on 17, because I'm double busting a guitar, I know that's going to go to two channels in a row. So I'll take channel 17, I'll send it here. But I'll take channel 17 again, and I'll send it here. So now I've double bust, double patched that input so that I can take a guitar, split it, and do some mojo magic between the two. Okay, I know that channel 18, 19, 20, 21 are all in order from them for the next guitars. So I can again grab these, oh, I'll go here, un, undo everything. I'll grab 18 to 21, which are the next four, right? And I will run those to these other four instruments. Now I know on my input patch that my trumpet, my sax, and my sax come in on channels 33 to 35, which are going to be on my second box of 24. So that must be 25 to 32. So I know that 33, 34, 35, and then 36, 37, 38 are going to be these six channels right here. The only things that aren't patched are my vocals, which were back on channels 23 and 22. So if I go back to my first box here, I know that channel 23 is my lead vocal, and I know that channel 22 is my harp. So I just patched my 32 channel show looking at these boxes. These boxes right now are labeled as generic AES 50 because of what they are, but what it also allows you to do on this tab of these inputs is there's an edit box. So I can go to the edit here and I can change device name, right? So I can make this be labeled as chat or call it inputs, right? I can go inputs space one through 24, enter, right? And then I can go to this second box and I can go edit and I can go here and I can go inputs 25 through 48, enter, right? So now when I click on these tabs, I know what they are. I've, I've named, named them what they are. So besides my stupid typo mistakes in there. So I've patched my whole console for my input side here. The only thing I haven't patched is I'm using monitors here that need to come out of my monitor outputs. Those are being fed from the local outputs of the console. And this is probably pretty standard as any console would be done. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go onto my console and I'm gonna go to internal and I'm gonna go to uh, actually, I'm going to go to built-in I.O., which is the Surface I.O. on the back, and then I'm going to go to my, let's see, monitor in. So, uh, nope, we're going to go to my, close that out, go to internal, I'm going to go, Actually, I'm doing this backwards. I'm thinking wrong. I'm going to go to monitor out, and I'm going to go to built-in I.O. So I'm going to take my monitor out left and right, and I'm going to feed those to outputs 1 to 8, So uh, 1 and 2. So in doing this patch, I've now patched my outputs of this console for my monitor bus for me to use these speakers to that. So I'll go back here, I'll go into the master scene and I'll store it. So now at this point, I have patched my whole inputs and my outputs on this console. And rather than looking at a bunch of little small boxes that you don't know what they are, everything is labeled really well in here. It's a, it's a, it's a simple drag, multi-select, or change things. One of the other things on it, which is kind of cool, if you wanted to do a 
a sequential type load of instruments and they were different and you had this side labeled and, and you knew that on your input list you needed inputs one, eight, three, six, nine in order. If you click on one, eight, three, six, nine on the inputs in that order, and then you click on your first input on this side, when you're talking about inputs from the box to channels, it will populate in the order that you picked if you do this in a system like that. So it's really intuitive to use and you can see everything in front of you. It's not looking at a lot of little boxes like before that were hard to figure out, like a brass knuckle for a tape return or things that are supposed to look like a microphone or whatever. Now, this is really easy to see what you're doing. And once it's patched, it's really to see, really easy to see what's going on. I can go in here to inputs one to 24. And if I click on this box, it tells me where it's coming from. So everything is really, really easy on the patching on this console for anybody from you know, any console brand that you've been working on. It shouldn't be difficult for anybody to work on this patching page. Thanks.